For a while now, I've been looking into action cameras, trying to find one I can use, and the action camera I see repeatedly everywhere is a GoPro. That's like the standard GoPro is what you go for. That's, that's the action camera everyone gets. But I've been looking for something a little more better on the quality and price, and still maintain high quality, and that's where I came across this one here called the Yi Light Action Camera. Now, I'm not one of those people that thinks cheap things are good because if you want something good, you have to pay for it. That's why it costs so much, because it's good. If you cheap out, you're just going to get crap. A lot of cameras I've seen, such as Vivet camera, which I'm pretty pronouncing wrong, it promises 4K resolution, but how do you get 4K on something that's like a 60 50 $40 camera? It doesn't make any sense. It's got to be like really, really shitty or just resized up. Between the Yi cameras to R, I decided to go with the Yi Lite one. There is a 4K Yi camera, but the Yi Lite records in 1080p, and most of the stuff that we view through are tablets, smartphones. 1080p is just more like the promise or the best number to be at for resolution, so that's why I decided to pick this one up. Before I unbox it though, I will say one thing that this lacks that the GoPro wins at, and that's waterproof. So before I open this up, I'm going to take a look at this over here. This is a waterproof case that came with it. Now this is just any generic waterproof case. I didn't particularly pick a specific one that was a Yi Light brand. This is just one that was bundled with it because frequent buyers bought this and that, so I just went with the same one everyone's buying. Shoop. Nothing up there. Just a little protective padding. And that is the camera itself. Very small. Got a little plastic thing in the lens. I'm not going to touch that. My my. Look how tiny that is. There we go. So that's the charging cable that comes with it. That is a very, very tiny charging cable. They give you a very, very small one. It is USB micro. That's such a pain in the ass because everything's USB C now, but USB micro, so it's going to use the charging it. And this is the battery. Oh. Huh. So that. It's gonna fit in there, so that's the battery. Oh! Look at that. Yee! Hmm. English. Occasion. Interesting. The screen is very responsive. Wi Fi frequency? I don't know, just 2.4. Select camera mode 16 megapixels. Press here for settings. Oh, okay. It's album. Slide down for quick menu drop. Slide horizontally to switch between capture mode. Press shutter. Uh, the button is on the right side, but the button is on the left. Oh, whatever. Download the action camera app. Okay, so it's app off the Google Play Store. Enjoy your light action camera. Interesting. Swipe down. Menus. Oh, Wi-Fi has Wi-Fi capability. Oh, duh, it has Wi-Fi capability. Connected Wi-Fi. I need the SD card slot out. Video quality. Oh, look at that. Options there. Photo, timer, burst, video. Oh, my eyes hurt looking at this. Lapse video, slow motions. Lapse photo. Long. So I've got a video, can I change the resolution or no, but it's, I'll figure it out later, but it is 1060, 1080 by 60 frames, that's really good. Uh, obviously no SD card in there, and settings, resolution, ah, that's why I can change it. So I can change it to 720, 60 frames, 144, well, 1044, so you can go 4K, you can go 4K, but it's 20 frames, so you can actually step on with that, it's pretty good. Timestamp, you can turn timestamp on, auto light, auto low light. So it does have, oh, it has a mic. That's another thing. That's another important thing. This does record voice. That was a huge issue to me. If it didn't record voice or sound, I should say, that would be very sad. Image quality high, so that's for taking photos. Ooh, there is a problem right there. I can't fit with the touchscreen. I mean, it would make sense. It is inside a case here. So that's going to be one problem. But I'm pretty sure if you install the app on the phone, then you can use the phone to adjust the settings on this. I'll have to double check on that. Even though I make videos, I'm not huge, huge on comes to editing. By editing, I mean like knowing all the frames per second, stuff like that. So I'm a very, I would say, basic user when it comes to video editing and video making. 
I'm probably going to do about two, three, maybe four different tests, four different clips for variety just to see the quality. So you can take a look at how it looks at low light levels, how it looks driving around or just moving around in general or walking around. And definitely how it looks going, uh, let's say, sound quality. Did everybody say sound? There's a highway down that way, and this is a little field here. Don't know how well the song quality is picking up, both the highway and me, and the little animals in the background chirping. But that's another test. Want to test it how it sounded. Granted, if I was in a more quiet place or a more public place, it might be a little more clear. It might not be that clear. There's a lot of wind, a lot of noise coming from the highway right where I'm standing here. Another thing that kept coming up was how am I going to use the settings or change the settings or record or not record with the camera or take pictures because of the issue is that while it was inside the waterproof case I really couldn't access the touchscreen. It wasn't working which you expect in the case but thankfully they did have an app that you can use on the phone. So this is my phone so what I've been using to record things but right now I'm actually recording with the Yi camera see how it comes out. And there's an app here that I can click on that app. And I can pair the device up to my app phone. Once you hit the record button though, you can't change the settings. That's kind of expected because whatever settings you want, they should be placed before recording. You can't change it in between. But you do have these icons here for adjustment you can do on the camera. It's going to be all the same settings in the camera you can find on here as well. So the setting button up here, you can change the settings such as ISO. ISO, which is very important because that's what's going to adjust the lighting. The lower the number, the better it is for dark. The higher the number, the better it is for light. Or I think it is. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. I never was very good with uh, photography or video recording stuff. I just know I need a good lighting. So that'll help adjust the light, especially since the camera itself doesn't have a light on it. But it's a very useful thing because this is definitely a good workaround for not being able to access the camera when it's inside the waterproof case. Interestingly, this requires Wi-Fi to connect or mobile data. When I was recording earlier with the head strap on, I completely forgot to turn my mobile data on. I had Wi-Fi on and there was no Wi-Fi signal where I was, but the two devices were still able to communicate. I think it's a little weird, I'm not sure how I was able to do that or what was going on, but it apparently worked. I saw maybe Bluetooth was turned on, but it wasn't Bluetooth, which this, doesn't, this apparently doesn't support Bluetooth from the camera, only supports Bluetooth from like a little on and off recording thing. Then again, I can just use a screen recorder on my phone to record what it looks like. Sorry if the quality sounds a little weird or the sound sounds a little off. But I wanted to show the settings here. You can actually see the settings. These are all on the camera as well. From resolution, you can change resolution to any of these options here. You want up to 4K. I think it's 4K, I'm not sure. But you can change the settings there. You also have the options of changing the video quality, the ISO set on auto, because I'm bad with that, and the volume sound quality on high. You can also do timestamp, uh, image stabilization. I should turn that on, shouldn't I? And I will stress, you definitely want to download the app for this because that app really makes a huge difference in how you're going to be able to use this with a waterproof case on. Or in general, if you have to strap to your head or to your chest or to another accessory, this will definitely help record or be able to get a hands-up recording. And also you can view what you recorded as well, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to hear myself. I think that'll do for what I wanted to do with the Yi camera. I haven't had a chance to use it as much as I wanted to just yet, but I wanted to get a few recordings of just walking around, driving around during sunny time, during dark times, just to see how it looked and how it sounds. The one issue I will say I have with this personally is getting the battery out, because you're supposed to press this button down to pull out. I struggled a lot trying to get that out there and I just I couldn't get it to open. It was driving me crazy and every time I almost got it open I kept accidentally turning it on and I wanted to turn it on and pull the battery out and watch it go ape shit. The other issue I have is right here with the charger, you put a micro USB cable in here, but it's like, it barely fits, like you have to put it in there, but the little cap is getting in the way and it just barely fits in there and I'm afraid that it's going to either break or the cable's going to break or it's going to break the little charging interior, 
that that's pretty shitty to me. The plus side of that, though, at least, is that if you have this plugged in directly to the computer, then you can just take your video off it or your video and photos off it directly. You don't have to take out the SD card. So once the SD card's in there and the battery's in there, essentially, you don't have to get that out at all. You can just plug it into the USB and get your photos and videos off that way. Another thing I thought was interesting is that all the videos it records, it records it in seven minute segments, or at least it divides it in seven minute segments. So if you record an hour, it'll divide it up into like whatever seven divided by an hour is. I'm not exactly sure why it does that. I suspect maybe that if you're recording an hour long footage and something happens 37 minutes in and you want that part, then it's the easier just to grab that segment than having the whole entire edit a whole entire hour long video just to get that part. From the minimal use I've had and as an amateur video recorder, I'll just say the Yi Light, it's really good. So far I'm liking it. I'm gonna see what more I can do with it. And if you're looking for a budget action camera that's really good quality and has good options, I think this might be the good choice to pick up. Of course, if anyone has their two cents or their opinion or something that's worth sharing with the camera, uh, please let me know. Please comment and let others know as well. As there might have been something more complicated or a question someone might have had that I did not cover. And if someone, if you know the answer, feel free to give that answer or just give that two cents for other buyers who might be curious on getting an e-camera instead of a GoPro camera.